which is seven, killed nine and wounded seven other people. And this boy uh, was in uh, he was he didn't he wasn't a, he didn't believe in God. And one thing that he did, according to the reports, is that he lined something, he went into the classroom with heavy arm, lined the kids up against the wall, and asked them if they were a Christian or not. And everyone who said that they were a Christian, he shot them in the head and killed them. And those who didn't answer or say no, he shot them in the leg. And so can, can you imagine your son or your daughter off at school, some guy come in with a gun, line them up against the wall, they know that they're about to die, and not one other person on the whole campus has a gun. Not one other person. If somebody else had a gun in their classroom, they could have taken that guy out while he's asking a question about Christianity. He could have easily just taken it out. But it's a gun free zone. And the first thing that Obama did, right away, held a press conference, calling for uh, uh, taking away your rights to bear arms. The very first thing, don't let any, uh, don't let what go to waste. Crisis go to waste. No love for the people. And I would say, you know what? I made a mistake here. We better arm everybody. Carry a gun. And this stuff wouldn't happen. Because these shootings are happening in gun-free zone areas. They're happening on college campuses around the country and at public schools because they know nobody has a gun. They have one security guy, and the security guy had pepper spray. Can you imagine this security guard going up to this heavy young young man, talking about hold it, I'm going to spray you. But that's how crazy things are, because evil is running out of country right now. Obama has opened up the gates of hell, and everything is coming out. And the Christians are under attack, and white Americans are under attack, and something needs to be done right away, because he has another year and a half in the not quite a half, but another year, the rest of his year, in the White House. And he's going to get worse before he gets married. He believes in the redistribution of wealth and power, and that's his mission. He hates white Americans and socialists. And we got some rough roads ahead of us. And I'm telling you all this so that you will understand that it is, it is so important that you make the kingdom of heaven first, seeking God first, and have that relationship with God. You know, the Bible talks about one day we'll be able to hide behind rocks. I will buy me a rock. <laughs> Why, well, you, you know, you get a rock. I got a rock at the house, and I'm going to tell you where it is. Because I'm going to be hiding behind a rock. <laughs> but the one thing that all of these people have in common, Obama, Oprah, Carter, even though Carter's father was in the home, he was looking to his mother, none of them have a good relationship with their fathers. No. Oh, mom and dad wasn't around. Uh, Ogre dad wasn't around. I don't even know if she knows who he is. Carter dad was there, but he said today that he was closer to his mother. He took after her. None of them had a close relationship with their dad. And I've noticed over the last 25 years, every unhappy person, every person that gets into trouble, Every angry man and woman, every man and woman who made children out of wedlock are not close to their fathers. They don't have a relationship with their fathers. And as a result of not having a relationship with their fathers, they have no relationship with God. <coughs> That's the problem in America today. If we don't return to the fathers, you can hang it up. And if you have children, I would highly recommend you get yourself right and draw close to your children so they can love you. Otherwise, they won't have a chance. They'll go out because they'll be angry and they will be deceived. Without a doubt. They, they can't help it because when you're not loving your dad, you're an angry man or woman, a female or female. And anybody can come along and tell you a lie, Satan can speak to you and lie to you, and you can't help but believe it. You cannot because it's spiritual. And you're subject to one or the other. And all angry people are subject to Satan. I was talking with one of my sisters yesterday. And 
computer, just going on and on and on. The Bible, and I brought this and that, all learned stuff, right? So I asked her a few questions. She's like, I asked her, is the Bible the word from God or the word of God? What do you think? You tell me. You tell me. Where's the scripture? Where's the scripture? You know what she said to me? She said, my pastor told me, if they don't bring you, bring you with the scriptures, don't believe it. I said, your pastor is a darn fool. I said another word, but I can't say it here. <laughs> it takes the place of darn. <laughs> what was it? Huh? What was it? <laughs> I can't say it here. And she was going on and on and on. And I'm like, calm down, girl. Just pay attention to what you say. And I asked her a question. Well, what does, and so she asked me, what does from and of mean? What's your definition of from? And what's your definition of I'm like, if I tell you that, I'll answer it for you. You need to know for yourself. And I say that to say this, you need to know the truth for yourself. It, the truth needs to become alive in you. No one can teach you the truth. They teach you about the truth, but they cannot teach you the truth. The truth will be revealed to you from God. And if you live with Him, His mindset, He will reveal it to you all the time. Otherwise, Satan is revealing the truth to you. You learn the Bible, for example, intellectually, he will reveal this quote in your head. And your faith is the voice of God, and it's not. This is a serious thing that we're dealing with. It's not a joke. I was talking to a man the other day. And I've known this guy for a long time, married with a family. And this guy's in his, I think he's probably in his late 40s, early 50s. This guy was so pitiful, it made me sad. I, I, I literally started crying for him. He was so immature and had no sense of understanding and wisdom at all. I'm surprised he's still alive. It had to be God's mercy. But a lot of men are like that. I've never seen so many immature, weak, pathetic men in all my life. Even when I was growing up, I was the worst sinner you ever want to be. Did everything I wanted to do, knowing that it was wrong, having fun with some of it. I still try to be a man, you know? Because I, you know, at least I have my grandfather that let me see what a man looked like, at least. And the way he acts and the way he's supposed to be. These men today don't have it. I've never seen such weak, scary, girly, emotional, just weak men. No wonder you women are becoming lesbians. I bet a lesbian is stronger than a man. <laughs> but we gotta return this. That's the whole point. We gotta turn this back to God. We gotta turn back to Him and allow Him to guide us so we can get this thing right. Because Satan is busy, and you know what he wants first? Is your children. He go after the children first. Especially if he can get that man out of the way. He go after the kids first through education, through whatever type of program. He going after the children because if he can deceive the young, as they get older, they're going to promote his ideas. They're not going to believe the truth, they're going to believe the lie. So he's going after the children first. It's time to wake up, folks. We have some serious, and it's going to get worse, short of a miracle from God. It's going to get worse. And so I wouldn't play with this thing. Now, I would be all freaking out worried. But I would not play with it. It's not a joke. I would stick with my prayer. I would be honest about my own weakness. I would um, just watch myself so I could have that relationship with God. Because this thing is bad. I've not seen it like this before. And I just want to share that with you. So that for white people, um, when you are out and about, I will watch my back, I'm telling you. Because these young black people, it's better than men, and some of these young girls who, not, who have not been raised with fathers and mothers in the home, they hate you. They absolutely, they don't care if you're a liberal or Democrat, conservative or Republican, rich or poor. 
Then I'm not going to walk up to you and ask for your ID. Hey, white person, let me see if you're a Democrat. They're going to rob you. They're going to beat you up. They're going to kill you in some cases. There's no joke. But this has been going on for years. This started with the Civil Rights Movement. It really started with Jackson and all those people. And because no one did anything about it, it has gotten worse now. Because with evil, if you don't stop evil right away, just think about your own personal life. You can get into something, and if you don't cut it out right away, you get deeper and deeper into it. If you don't turn away from it right away until you have lost yourself. That's how evil operate. And it has stopped those guys back in the 60s. And they have taught other blacks how to be the same way, the same spirit. White people are afraid to be called, you know, they don't want to be called racist. I had a, a fundraiser guy, and it was so funny, and then I chased the question. We were interviewing a Patrick, uh, uh, Andre and I was interviewing a, uh, a Jewish guy and his brother to do some fundraising for us yesterday. And uh, so during the conversation, I asked him, I said, should I hire a man or a woman to do my fundraising? I said, I heard a report that men raise money better than women, raise more money better than women, right? And he turned all pink and red. He said, no, don't say that. Don't say that. That might be true, but don't say it. And then he said, women raise more money. I said, look, I don't just talking about the report. The man got scared just with me saying that. It wasn't that what Patrick had told me about the report. Did you tell me about the report? Yeah, I did. What did the report say? That men, men make more money in fundraising than women do. I didn't make that up. It's not against women. But right away, it's so afraid you can't even mention a woman now. This guy like turned real pink and he's a Jew. I'm like, okay, man, come down. It was so funny. That's the fear that is in America today. And that's all from the devil. It's not real. And if you love God with all your heart, soul, and life, you love everybody the same. There is no difference. <laughs> yes, Mark? I, I, I think I realize there's a strategy to um, Oprah and Jimmy Carter, especially Jimmy Carter. Jimmy Carter represents uh, white liberals who think they can get away with painting the police as racist because the police, they're more, on average, they're conservative guys. And so if they can paint white conservatives as racist, it's just another way of painting white conservatives as racist, then the white liberals feel like they are out from under the bus. It's not us, it's these white conservatives. And that's how they are participating in it. They're not, and like you say, they're not really thinking, oh, will they check for my Democrat ID? Maybe they need to wear a shirt, you know, that I'm Democrat, I'm not a racist, right? They'll, they'll probably come out with something like that. You know, like they, they branded the Jews with an armband. They better wear one of those shirts. Yeah, I think that's what they'll, they'll be doing. And Nancy hoping Mal that gets them off. Nancy Pelosi uh, was speaking somewhere, she was speaking of Black Lives Matter. And she was saying things like, I can't, and I, I don't remember exactly how I did paraphrase it here, I can't, I won't claim to understand the pain and the grief and, the, and, and this and that that black people go through and that what they'll deal with and deal with racism. I, I, I don't claim to feel their pain. I'm like, you stupid, crazy. Look how they are kidding. Black people feel the same pain that white folks feel. Uh, uh, Mexican, Chinese, Japanese, if they don't have fathers, if they don't feel love, if they're angry, they feel the same pain that everybody else feels. There's no difference. But she's trying to set them apart as though somehow or another we're not human, or we're more human than anybody, I don't know what it is. But we have some different pain than somebody else has. Black people don't feel, they don't feel racism pain. They feel angry about other things, and they have been told that it's about racism, and they're just believing it to a lie. There's no pain with that, except for anger that anybody can have. It's insane. It's just so insane. And these people have the control of the media, 
they're out there and they can get the word out. We got to get the truth out. We got to, I'm so into the truth now, I can't stand myself. I just rather die than to be caught up with this mess and be afraid. I really rather be dead. Because you're dead anyway. Can you imagine walking through life with fear? You can't speak your mind. You can't make a joke. You can't make a gay joke. Everybody like making gay jokes. <laughs> you know I mean? Or black jokes, or white jokes, or female jokes, or male jokes. And that's what we. It ain't funny unless it's true. <laughs> Isn't that true? Yes, ma'am. I was going to say, the media has a lot to do with a lot of the things that are going on Absolutely. right now. I mean, they'll, they'll get an idea and they contact that person and they get them on the show. They're, they, the social media, I mean, people post things and everything. There was a, um, a post the other day in the balloons. Black balloons, and they said you could go to the dollar store and get these black balloons. And they were having this big drive, and it said um, Black Lives Matter. And to me, all lives matter. Okay, all lives matter. Um, I'm African American, and of course, I I care about everybody. I care about my family too. So when we say Black Lives Matter, are we talking about just shootings, because there's shootings that they say the police are doing, but there's shooting that black on black crime. No. There's 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 all these other shootings, shootings in cars and all that. Nobody's talking about it. They're, they're only putting it on one segment. They're only pointing on one segment. As a matter segment. of fact, if you say white lives matter too, mm -hmm. they'll point you down and protest you and everything. So now white people are afraid to say white lives matter. Yeah, like, no, you can't say it. Yes. It's just black lives. And the wife is like, okay, I'm sorry. Isn't that crazy? Men do that too. White men. I didn't know white men were so weak. I used to say white men were tough. They found in America. They beat down the Indians and sent them over there with their pot. You know that stuff that. You know. Yeah, they built through the rain and the storm. They, they conquered the buffalo. <laughs> and they built a great America. And then they turn around and say, you know what? We're going to create a constitution. All people are welcome to do what we're doing. So they say, oh, white people, something else. That's not true. <laughs> that is not, unless they used to be that way in the good old days, and now they turn girly. But white men are scared. It's my norm. How can you be a Christ, man of Christ, on earth? Jesus Christ is your brother if you believe in the Father. You and Jesus Christ become brothers. So now your Father, who created all things, is with you, making all things possible, giving you the courage and giving you the love and telling you don't worry about the world. You tell the truth. If one door shut down on you, don't worry, I'll open up another one. Just love me, God, and love your brother as yourself. How can Jesus Christ be afraid? So men are Jesus with fear. It's insane. And they're afraid to Lord in a minute. Amen, brother. And then go home with a wife beautiful. <laughs> Take that baby down out for a walk. <laughs> Change that baby to diaper. Okay, honey. <laughs> Jimmy Carter said, and then I take the question again. Jimmy Carter said that he made a promise. He did. Oh, he forgot his wife's <clears throat> birthday. And he used to go to America for a long time. Years ago when he first got married, he forgot her birthday. And so he wrote a note to her saying, I made you a promise that whatever you want me to do the rest of my life, I will do it for you. And so Roslyn thought about what she wanted, and she said, all right, here's what I want you to do for me for the rest of your life. I want you to bring my coffee to the bed every morning. And every morning he's been taking her coffee to the bed. And he even admitted, I feel ashamed about this. <laughs> Yeah, I feel ashamed. So you, you know you know it's wrong, right? <laughs> but he's still doing it to this day. And open like, oh, that's so nice. 
And this breath that we were talking about, you can't think it. If you got fear, you better go sit down. You better go pray, but they're going to wipe you out. Because once you truly been born again, there is no fear. You don't feel it. You don't think about it. It's not a part. You're just living your life, right? It's not even a part of your thinking. When you, it's time to take action, there is no second thought about, oh, what's going to happen? Uh, if I do this, what will happen? If I say this, well, it's not even a part of your thinking. Just like when anger is being, the, the spirit of anger is taken away from you. It's taken away from you, so there's no thought of it ever again. You don't feel it, you don't think about it. When someone is attacking you, you, you don't even think to be mad at them. You're just looking at them and you can see where they're coming from. And you have compassion for them. Even if it's your bitter enemy, you have the patience to endure. Whenever you endure with patience, you uh, possess your soul. When you can do that. So don't fake this. You have to be born into it. You have to be born into the family. And he'll take that anger away from you. But you got to you be born again. And that's the only way we're going to fight this battle and win it. We can win it. But you've got to be born again. There's no fake stuff. This is a spiritual battle. This thing's going to keep you down and become faithful. Because Satan doesn't give up. If you notice that, he does. And another thing that Satan likes to do, when Satan gets mad, let's say Satan lives in you, or you get mad at somebody, right? Satan not going to let you stand alone. You want to go and gather an army to go get that one person that you're mad at. Mm -hmm. Have you noticed that? Evil people, angry people don't fight alone. They get witnesses. They build an army. Where the children of God don't need an army because they know that God is with them. But they going to go and talk about you to this person, talk about you to that person, you get some witnesses, build a little army, and then they'll come after you. Because they don't have the courage to go up against the children of God on their own. They are afraid. Isn't that something? Yes, ma'am. Maybe you can explain, you know, you're talking about the spiritual God, I just wonder if people understand that you can't do anything about that battle. About what now? About, about the spiritual God. Oh, yeah. It That's sounds right. like there's something to do. You know, it sounds like you've got authority. You can, you know, I'm just, yeah. maybe you can explain that. The one thing I love about the spiritual battle, you can give up fighting. There's nothing you can do. You become the observer going through the battle. Because you see, the one thing that God told me way back when was there's nothing I can do of myself. Nothing. And I was so glad to see that because it's nice to stop trying to fight this thing on your own. But you're right, there's absolutely nothing you can do. But what he does is allow you to see what to do and give you the courage to do it. And the insight and the know-how to do it. But of yourself, you can do nothing. The children of Satan are always trying to make things happen in their lives and, and fight for themselves and whatever, whatever, right? The children of God don't. They just seek the Father and that His will be done through them. Hey, it's amazing. Like a miracle happens all the time. And I love knowing that of myself, I can do nothing. But He has to show you these things. Forgiveness. A lot of people are angry at their parents. They're angry at this and that. And they have said, I'm sorry, I don't mean it, uh, forgive me, I feel really badly about it. And then for a while, they see it nice, and then it come back again, right? Because forgiveness is not words. Forgiveness is a spiritual action that only God can do. He can remove that identity from you. Words don't get it. You, you need a change of heart. And if it's a whole, a thing that's made a home in you, it's living there. And it's controlling you and making you think it's you and it's not. And that's why you hear about saying, I'm sorry, I don't mean to be mad. And then the next day you're mad again, right? <laughs> because that spirit lives in them. You become like what you hate. And only and all God needs you to do is to see that it's there and he'll do the rest. He'll take it away from you. And once you take it out of you, you never have to think about it again. Because now God is not even there for Satan to be on your mind anymore. Because the Spirit is no longer there. 
And so, you know, you'll be healed from it. But only God can talk you to forgive. Anybody disagree with that? Yes, sir. Okay. It seems like uh, my, uh, I remember an interesting incident in my, in my job. One of my co workers was a guy who was black. Was, uh, Rather criticizing me as the choices of movies I was going to see, and he claimed it. He said, I won't know what we were about. He looked at me, and rather was disappointed that one of the cho choices wasn't that movie straight out of Compton. But to be honest, I don't know if I can fully relate to a movie like that. Straight out of Compton? Yes. Uh -huh. Because uh, it seems like he's more, uh, I guess he's more interested in that. Uh, in a way, more interested in uh, black, uh, black uh, knowing their own culture than uh, a black, uh, black man wanting uh, to assimilate with other cultures. Yeah, they were blind and can't see what's going on. You have to have a father, you got to be. If you don't love your father, hang it up. Yes? If you believe that someone feels that way, has that anger inside them, and can't let it go, and they say they forgive, but they really don't. You can't really do much more than pray for that person. Right? That's all you can do. That's all you can do. That, that's nothing else you can do. Even for your own self, if you want to forgive, but you don't, there's nothing you can do about that either. Just relax, and if it's in your heart for it to be removed, God is just taking it away from you. So if you can't take it out away from yourself, you definitely can't take it away from someone else. And see, that's where mankind is so prideful. Mankind really believe that they are God. That they can take away, they can control, that they're in control. You ain't in control or nothing. It's the God that you serve that's controlling you. He's influencing you. Or well, this other God will influence you. And you can't serve too. My sister said, well, sometimes, but oh, she's a little Christian, right? Sometimes I do good things and sometimes I do bad things. Like all human beings. I said, but you're still the devil. You're not God's child. Show me insult me like this. You're my brother. I said, that's why I'm telling you the truth. You got to get over there. She won't even forgive my father, so you know she's not free. She said, oh, my, my dad apologized. One day he was like crying. Apologizing to her. I'm like, Dad, stop. This girl is not going to forgive you. The more you cry, the more she come alive. Have you ever seen someone come alive and they can punish you? <laughs> they keep coming at you, coming at you. As soon as they get a reaction out of you, they like, oh, this is going to feel better now. And then you all feel like a fool. Because it's like you gave up your life to someone. Anybody ever been through that? I have. <laughs> The women used to do that to me all the time. <laughs> you didn't say you were sorry, but I didn't do anything. Yes, you did. And then I'd walk away from it. they come over nagging and nagging. And then a week later, they still nagging and nagging. And then I get mad, and then the nagging stop. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? <laughs> yes, Ed. Oh, I just wanted to, like you talked about a lot earlier, from what I understand, his father is a natural father. He is a communist. I'm sorry? His father is a communist. Yeah. And he's dead now, I think. Yeah, he is. But with my own dad, it took me a long time for me to come to terms with my, my father. A weak man, once a weak man. Uh, and he was dominated by the women in his life. Yeah. Dominated so, by mom. Yeah, yeah. He was here when we were all, remember when we were all in Manchester. Yeah. Broke out crying and everything, so I'm like, you know, he did everything his mother told him to do. And, you know, it took a long time for me to come to terms with that. Yeah. And for him, did you forgive me? <laughs> Say again? Did you forgive your father? Yeah. Yeah. Did you forgive I mean, your dad? I, I, I came to terms to understand that he just... Did you forgive your dad? Yeah. You forgave your father? Mm -hmm. I can't hear you. Yes. Yes, I did. Good, man. And what did that do for you to forgive him? What it did for me is realize my weakness, and what I got from him, what I inherited from him. And did you become strong after that? 
Yes, just by seeing the reality of the whole situation. And how did that impact your, your kids when you became strong? It seems like when you, I'm talking about, you know, in general, when, when, you, when you forgive people in your life for what they... No, no saying you, say me or I. Yeah, when, when I forgive people in, in my life, it, 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 it automatically makes my kids see me in a different light. I don't know how it works, but it works like that. Yeah. I'm going to make a lot <laughs> One thing I want you guys to know, and the mothers too, the ladies too, if you overcome your anger and become a love, meaning the love of God is working through you, and your kids are messed up because you're weak, and you know, now you're just kind of angry and out there, God will restore your kids to you. He really will. I saw it happen with my son. My son was the meanest, nasty, I had to put him out. I did. I, he came to California at 18. My aunt lived here, but had no family or friend, and I'm just, you know, I knew why he was angry. And I told him, I said, okay, I put up. There are certain things I put up with, and there are others I want. And the two things I will not put up with, you running up my telephone bill and want to drive my car. <laughs> You can do everything else. <laughs> and he just got out of control. And then this stupid idiot ran up his uncle wheel. I told him not to do it, right? I said, okay, you got to go. And he was like, where am I I don't know it. I don't care. And I put him out. And he ended up going up to my ass house, standing overnight there, went back to New York. We didn't speak for a long time after that. And finally, because I knew that if I got right, because I know the power that's in men now, right? I knew if I got right, that God will give me my son back. And lo and behold, years later, here he is calling. And now we're so tight, I can hardly stand it because I want to play and talk all the time. <laughs> and it's so nice. <laughs> it is so nice. I'm telling you guys, I don't care how old your kids are, if you're not with them, I wouldn't focus on trying to get them back at this point. I'll get my son back with God. And then that will draw your kids back to you. It really will. I'm a witness to that. And my son hated me. His mother had lied to him, so, so it was hard for him to believe. Plus, he went through a lot with his stepfather and her. So he had a lot of hatred for me. And I focused on getting me right because I understood what he was going to do. And God gave my son back to me. And he wanted me to visit them and visit his grandkids. I'm a great grandfather. He wanted me to go over there and see him. I'm like, wow, this is cool, but now I have time for it. <laughs> you know what I'm grateful for? <laughs> But I'm telling you, it's in us, and God loves us, but we got to get serious with it. And nobody on earth, now our parents mess us up growing up, but when you become an adult, nobody is responsible for your anger and the way you feel, whether you are winning or losing in life, nobody else that you come in contact with have anything to do with that. So stop taking it out on them. Then you were already messed up. And as long as that said, as long as you blame someone else for the way you feel, you're going to live a life of an illusion. It's not real. No folks didn't mess you up. Your parents did that to you. And you're treating other people as though they did it to you. They didn't do that to you. They just be it themselves. But you got to repent and turn back to the Father. Uh, Philip, I heard something so nice about you the other day. I, I, I was thinking about it ever since I... This person told me that. Um, are you like nervous wonder what it is? He's like, oh, oh. I was talking to Ron, and I, in, at the end of our conversation, I said, oh, don't forget to pray, man. Make sure you say the prayer. He said, you'll be proud of my wife. Every day she get up and she go, I think he's in the backyard somewhere, and she read her scriptures and she pray. And I'm like, wow, I'm like, well, you better start doing that too, or she's gonna beat you out of your life. I'll try you. And stay with that. No matter what happens in your life, what situation is there, stay with that. Don't let Satan talk you out of it at all. Seek first the kingdom of God in his right way, all things will be added. Your, your, your family will be fine, you will be fine, you're gonna influence others, but you've got to stay with it. I've stayed with my prayer, thank God, for the last 27 to 28 years, nonstop. And I've seen what happens to those people who fall away from it. And then they often on, they pray 
away for a while and then you go party. Oh, I don't feel that bread in there, right? You see that life is just up and down. But if you stay with the Father, your life is straight and narrow. Touch it. It never changes. So stay with it. And God bless you for that. And do not let Satan talk to you out of here. Isn't that a nice thing for the husband to say? <laughs> yes. Now we can only get him to pray. <laughs> Are you praying wrong? Yeah. I'm praying right now. <laughs> <laughs>
Uh, Nigga, you know who this is? You know who that is? <laughs> Come here for one minute. You don't recognize him because of beard. A lumberjack? Come here. <laughs> 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 oh, now I remember what you can. That's Mike. And this is Faith. This is your Faith. How you doing? How old was it? How old were you? Well, no, I came back probably around 18. Oh, you did? Yes. How old are you now? I'm 25. Wow, you're old. <laughs> <laughs> did you, so what are you doing now? Tell us what you're doing, how your life going, and what's going on. Um, I am now living in Florida instead of California. I moved over with my mom. She is still working for McDonald's, owning a business out there. Um, well, she moved from California to Florida, and I made the decision to go with her. Um, and that's just basically what I've been doing, is trying to start up the business over there and hopefully get into a career with her owner-operator. Oh, yeah. So, and do the two of you get along now? We do. We get along. Amazing story. Probably six years ago now, she started coming to God. Um, and just completely changed her life and our relationship with how she saw things. Um, and even before she couldn't even say the word of God, like anything that came out of her, she was never like teaching me bad things. She'd be like, well, be a good person. There's all that general stuff. Like, be a good person and don't lie. Um, don't be angry, but at home, that's not what it was. We were bad yeah. at it all the time. Um, and she was always very dominant over everything that happened. But she she changed first because we had split off. I moved out of her house um, when I before I graduated high school. And during those couple of years that we hardly had contact, I still worked for the business, but we didn't see each other at all. I was an underdog, and she was high up, so we didn't talk at all. But then I started going to meetings and managing and being promoted. Um, and I started seeing her only at meetings, and she you could tell there was a change just by how she was reacting to her under managers. Um, she was much more calm, didn't come in with like ears puffing with anger anymore at certain things. And um, then I started seeing a change in the managers around her and her talking about, okay, so how do we, how do you believe in God? Like saying stuff like that, and how do we get to a better level of whatever it is? Mm -hmm. Results, how do you deal with your people better? So that started happening, um, and then our relationship started building off of that. Really? Because I could see her when there was about to be an argument between us. She would calm herself and say, you know what, I think I can see, I can see where you're coming from. And honestly, I, have, I still do. Um, I don't think, I know I haven't truly forgiven her yet for what had happened um, when I was younger, but it's, it's a blessing to work with her and have a relationship at all with her anymore. So that's where our life is going. How many McDonald's do you have? Does she, she now has nine. Nine? Yeah. Whoa, well, I'm hanging it too. <laughs> <laughs> Just in case she died, and those things are yours. Oh, no, I wish. That's not how McDonald's works at all. They don't do an inheritance program at all. No, no. no. And how are things with you and your dad? Uh, wonderful. Yeah? Yeah, there's a two-year strain where I was a bad daughter, and I stopped. Um, speaking with him actually completely. He reached out a couple times, but he was very patient. He told me there's a couple things I had to do in life. Um, and they're small, really, looking at it, it usually always is very simple. Yeah. And I didn't follow his lead, so I stopped talking to him out of guilt and shame. Uh -huh. Like I wasn't doing what I knew I should have been. Um, and so I stopped talking to him. And, but about two years later, he did call me, contacted, still with love. And, Oh, I remember the shame, like the guilt washing down. Like, I can't believe I'm not speaking with my father. I'm not showing the love that I have for him. Um, and he's still as patient and kind throughout this whole time. I'm not talking to him for two years. Um, and he would still just leave me a voice note every once in a while. I love you the same. I hope you're having a good day and everything's going well. And realize I'm here for you and you want to come back. And so after two years, I was finally able to just pick up the phone and say, Hi, God. <laughs> Wow. And um, so, but otherwise, it's it was the same right off the bat. 
I loved my father, and we always had a great relationship. And after that, that was just the biggest, that was the biggest part, was that disobedience that, like, just I couldn't get over it myself. Yeah. So. Well, great. Uh, your dad, from day one, fought for you. I've never seen a father fighting for his child in a manner that he did. Mike lived at the house for a while. Uh, yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Huh. <laughs> 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 And so he fought for you for you from day one. Remember that, Patrick? He yeah. never gave up on you at all. So you're blessed that your father was glad to and your mother to come around to. Yeah. It's good to see you. It's, it's good to be back. We have made it a point. I'm on vacation right now. And so like, we have to see Fisher. Uh, we have to see Jesse. Yeah. Everybody. Yeah. Well, welcome back. I'm Thank glad to see you. you. Yeah. Keep it up. So Great you have a nice You're dating? I know. <laughs> yes. I'm dating. Are you gonna get married? No. Nowhere close to that. You're never gonna get married? Oh, I would love to get married. Oh, okay. <laughs> Just... I might want some grand trip too. <laughs> well, I'll let you know if that happens. You'll be meeting the man before marrying. Oh good. You have an issue with me? No, thank that one because like in the radio show, I think the last week or two weeks, mm. you said men that had girls were weak. She didn't like Oh, my dad had a girlfriend. I said, said real man made boys first. She agreed, though. <laughs> uh, <laughs> 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 That's why I said, if you are a man and your kids are girls first, you're weak. <laughs> oh, sorry. I didn't mean you. <laughs> <laughs> but, well, glad to see you. Glad to see you, Mike. Uh, this is your first time here? John Tate, right? Wait, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Antoine. Antoine, yeah. Same thing. <laughs> <laughs> Antoine, this is your first time here. Yes. I'm glad you made it, man. Uh, tell us what's your name, what you do, and how did you hear about us? Well, um, <laughs> um, my name is Antoine Monroe. Um, I go to Fairfax High School. And um, I heard about this um, church through uh, me and her family. They had uh, invited me out to come on Sunday. I decided just to come this evening. And you're a big time basketball player on the Fairfax team, right? Uh, you can say so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm glad you made any questions or anything you disagree with or anything I need to clear up, make something clear for you? No, I don't know. No? Anything you disagree with? No. Nope. What do you think about what you heard? Uh, it made sense. You know, how it all came together. You know, um, it actually hit me home. When you're talking about the racism and stuff like that, how it's not, not real to the region and stuff like that. Yeah. Good. You got a long life you, ahead of you, and you don't want to be hating people. You don't want to be mad. It's all spiritual. There are bad people. And there are good people. Those on the side of God are good. Those on the side of Satan are evil. That's all that's going on. They have nothing to do with color. And will you come back? Of course. You better. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't want to be in that play with you anymore. <laughs> all right. Thank you for coming. All right. Okay, let's do the offer. Oh, make sure you get some information from Stephanie over here. Uh, any uh, comment, I mean, uh, announcement, Curtis? Uh, your Jesse has an article on uh, WNU.com regarding the uh, mass shooting in Oregon. Yeah. Great. Uh, let's do the offer. Uh, Mike, you like the way the place look? It wasn't like this when you were here last year. I didn't post. Yeah. I like the paint, not a girl there. She thought a girl that great. said guys were number one in marketing and thought that girl was it. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, we drove by before we came in and uh, the thing was already like the empty. Yeah. That's yeah, so totally it's nothing. I know. I didn't know this room could look like this. Uh, we're not quite done yet. We're gonna, this is going to change a little bit. We've got to have a sign in. That's going to change every minute. We've got some different furniture in front of you. And uh, then we'll be done. We're not quite done. Did this help you then? Yes. Uh, I saw that movie, uh... War Room? War Room. It was good. It was good? Did, did, what'd you like about it? Who said it was good? Kena, what'd you like about it while we were doing the offer? Um, um, I think it's just... I haven't seen it, like, a lot of the movies, the Christian movies, they haven't done one like that. Um, 
that's the first time I was ever introduced to a war room. Mm -hmm. I thought it was really interesting and neat. And how she, how the wife fixed herself before she tried to fix her husband. Right. Her yeah. Good. I like the way they get that part too because it allowed women to see that your husband is not your problem, you're your own problem. Mm -hmm. And you need to start with yourself first. I like that. Did you like her? I cried. You cried? I had to fill it in. Make sure you stay in the prayer. Yes. <laughs> all of you have not seen it. You don't want to know my opinion of it yet. No. I'll tell you when everybody is going to see it. I've seen it. I saw it. I didn't see it. Is it in the theater? Is it in the theater? I saw it in the reader there already. Uh -huh. I understand why I'm crying too. <laughs> I did. So I did. I did. Yeah, I totally did. I really did it. Very nice. Very nice. I've never seen a Christian movie like that either. So I thought it was well, well done. Very nice. Um, okay. Uh, that's it for the announcement, right? Yeah. Thank you, uh, men and ladies, for coming and stay with your prayer. Relax and let God work through you. All right. Have a good week. Thank you.